So how much more expensive would it be to charge the car to 100%? Why, why are you only charging your I car to 80%? There's so many more questions come so from that. So many questions. My, I have a oh, hello. charger at home. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. I have a charger at home. And what if that's changed price? Wow, well, yeah. Well, your electricity would have changed yes. price. Yes, that's true. I just said it's so cool. But it is an interesting thing, Biggins. Uh, Christopher Biggins, we should say, <laughs> and uh, Don Neeson here with the newspapers this morning. But somebody like you trying to do the right thing, getting the electric car, yep. you, you, you've had yours quite a while now. I have. Um, so maybe, you know, it's all going wrong now, isn't it? It's, it's, it's going to be a deterrent. People aren't going to be running trying to do this as quickly as they have been before. Well, that's that's life, isn't it? Everything, <laughs> everything we're not going to be rushing to. You know, it's, it's a terrible situation we're in. Mm. Yeah. Um, how's it all affecting you? Electric car, would it put you off uh, doing that? Let us know. Mm. Um, so let's go stay with you, Bingham, and we're talking about the tax situation. Uh, at the Labour Party conference, Keir Starmer will say, I will reinstate 45 pence tax to back public services. This is front page of The Guardian. I find it very distressing that there's, you know, already we are now in this fighting you know, two different camps, three different camps who, who count other parties. I just think, it wouldn't it be marvellous what we suddenly have come to a point where if only we could get together and, we, you know, there's this, you know, he's saying one thing, the Conservatives are saying another. I mean, what is the answer? I'm not sure. Well, lots of people have been saying at least finally there's a difference between the two yeah. parties and well, actually you can go and really know what you're voting for, whereas before a lot of people were sort of I suppose that is crossing true. the line. But you're asking for a government of national crisis, right? Yes. The national crisis. Exactly. And like almost like wartime, you're saying, well, why can't you just all put your party political stuff aside and get things done? Yeah, because we need to get things done. I mean, we're in a terrible situation. I mean, goodness knows what's going to happen come January. January of this of next year. I mean, it's going to be appalling. Yeah. So, Don, you were itching to get in there by that. Oh, I was just going to agree with Isabel um, because I, I think you, you know at least you do for once have clear blue water between the two parties, whereas before it's been a bit muddied with what what each party actually stood for, but now you do. It's very interesting looking at all the front pages today, though. I mean, they, they fall, again, the clear blue water being the left-leaning papers and the right-leaning papers. I mean, The Guardian, sort of like Keir Starmer, marvellous, da 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 Meanwhile, papers like The, the Daily Mail are Quasi's boost for family and the Express trust pledges to build world-beating economy. So, again, the papers are very clearly divided on which, which camp they're supporting. But, I mean, I, I agree with Chris Biggins on this one because it's like you know reinstating the 45p tax uh, um, thing that, that Quasi Cotting abolished on Friday it's like okay yeah you're talking about it you can't do anything about it until you get in power possibly in two years time possibly not then mm. so I you know all the papers are obviously covering the Labour Party conference as they were the Conservative one coming mm. up but What's the point of a conference But it now? reinstates the uh, opinion that this is a budget for the rich. Yes, and no, uh, absolutely. As, as you were talking about earlier, Isabel, how that will go down in red water. Well, absolutely, and, and the reporting from, from conference is that there is a real buzz this time. There's a real sense that they're actually finally getting close, possibly, to winning an election. Um, and, you know, <laughs> these sorts of policies will, will resonate with people but in the it's, red It's very interesting, is it? Because the independent today, uh, Starmer fears reversing tax cuts will cost the election not the high-end tax cuts but the um, the cut from 20% to 19% in the basic tax rate now Starmer is saying he's not doing that because he wants to carry on helping people which he probably does I, I believe deep down is probably a good man um, however the independent I think have nailed it there because he thinks if he does that telling ordinary working families whatever that actually even is these days um, that they will have to pay more tax under labor might lose him those votes as well mm, interesting I was shocked too today to see to read in some of the papers where the conference was ordered to sing I God know, Save yes. the King which I think with the words in case they didn't know that I know <laughs> I know I thought that was that said a lot mm. well what does it say it says that labor says um, patriotism and the country and the wave of, of all of that in the wake of the Queen's death we'll have a bit of that thank you very much mm, yeah I mean, no one's saying that, you know, uh, being a Labour voter means that you're unpatriotic, but they're really just making it clear. Absolutely. I think they think it's a voter's uh, joy, you know. Capitalising yeah. on it, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, look, 
We were talking before, weren't we? Biggins was saying, why can't they sort of all come together in a bit of a unity act? Uh, Dawn, you've chosen the story in the mail. Labour and Lib Dem are doing a unity act, aren't they? Well, this, so, uh, although both parties deny it, obviously. Right, no, okay. No, 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 okay. There's, well, there's no joined up thinking <laughs> about how we're going to uh, um, deliberately target the seats that uh, um, the Lib Dems can win over the Tories. I mean, sort of like, you know, Labour attempt to strengthen an anti Tory pact, not a pact, both denied it, um, by targeting only two seats that are held by the Lib Dems in the next election. So basically, they are. It is a pact, isn't it? They're just determined to go for the seats that are very vulnerable to Conservative um, wins, and that's the only two they're going to go for. So how they, on one hand, they can deny they are going to um, sort of like join with the Lib Dems mm. to oust the Tories, and then the next saying, well, we're only going for these two seats because they're the vulnerable ones. You know, if the Lib Dems will win these over the Tories, we're not going to bother with those ones. Mm. Biggins, being in the public eye, being an entertainer, um, you'll know that it is a thin divide line, uh, a tightrope to walk, coming out and declaring uh, your political affiliation. That it can, you know, turn a lot of people off. And as an artist, you might think, well, it's not worth that. So here we have the footballer Gary Neville, the former footballer, and he's, he's making big noises, um, which may indicate he has got political ambition but basically he's saying the tax cuts that um, the conservatives have put in place are for the rich and they are immoral he will say and he's backing Keir Starmer for PM well I think that's his opinion isn't it I mean you know and good on him if that's what he wants to say I mean um, celebrity is a very difficult one uh, you know you're we, we all have opinions uh, and yet we're I some, sometimes was frightened of actually saying what you want to say. I mean, I remember, for instance, uh, a personal thing was being gay. Uh, when I was doing children's television and uh, in the 80s, mm. you had to be very, very careful. Mm. You know, and I was always open. I mean, no one, I was never hiding it. But you couldn't say everything that you wanted to say. Yes. So it was, it's, it's very tricky. And I think it's certainly tricky politically nowadays to be a celebrity and say what you think. I, I remember in the, the 80s, people like Bob Monkhouse coming out and being very pro-conservative. Jim Davidson, I don't think it's done Jim any harm, really, as well. Jim's a regular contributor uh, to GB News. What do you think, Dom? I, I think, I think... <sighs> The, the, the whole Gary Neville, look, uh, as Biggins has just said, it's, it's his opinion, it's perfectly right to express it. But, I mean, it's, you know, he's, he said, I don't know anyone on more than 150,000 who think it's the right thing to do. Well, I don't think he knows that many footballers. <laughs> quite a few footballers are actually quite keen on getting their next flash sports car. Absolutely. Their next, match, their next holiday, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and also, he, he says, uh, what does he say here? Um, uh, yeah, I can speak directly when I'm not involved in politics. He says taking a front seat at the party conference. I mean, I think he does have... He's saying, no, I, I'm not interested in becoming a politician. Um, I, I don't have political ambition. I want to speak for the people. Well, how in touch is he with the people, really? Because he is in that top bracket, and he's very clearly got political ambition. But I think the, the problem with celebrities coming out with opinions is the fact that it's okay if they stick by it, but it's the hypocrisy I think a lot of people have. Yeah. It's like people like Emma Thompson and Prince Harry lecturing us on the green economy and what we should do and shouldn't do and feel, feel guilty about taking your one-week holiday in Benidorm while they fly around the world on the private jets. It's the hypocrisy involved. So I think celebrities, begins you probably know more than me, obviously I'm not one, but you have to be very careful to not be hypocritical in when you're expressing an opinion because ordinary people go, right, OK, you can't tell us to do something while you don't do it. I agree, totally. It's to say, you know, that's, I suppose that's that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the danger. Um, but um, what's his name in Manchester? Andy Burnham, uh, the mayor of Greater Manchester, um, you know, he's sort of also hinting don't rule me out of Westminster. Well, and disagreeing with Starmer on, on yes, yeah. his position on, on Twitter. Very big. So what well. I'm saying is it's interesting, this little jigsaw that's mm. happening. So you uh, could see Burnham. Neville going to Burnham's spot, Burnham yeah. going mm -hmm. to yeah. Starmer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Burnham is very ambitious. Where Starmer go, though? He's, he's also very good. He's yeah, well, no, I like him. Well. I like him. Yeah. I like him a lot. Yeah. We were he is saying that he would put that 19% uh, um, back up to 20 yeah. Yeah, for low earners, isn't yeah. he? So he totally just said he had tax cuts the world cuts anywhere and just not more tax. Not a good idea. But you see, the thing about what happened on Friday, I mean, all very well and good, but me, anybody, would sit and look and say, 
but the country's boat broke, the country's bankrupt. Yeah. How are we going to pay for all the things that we are supposed to pay for? And all we hear is, yes, we'll pay that. Yes, yeah. we'll give you a grant for small businesses. Yes, we'll subsidise your electricity. Yes, it just goes on and on and on. Well, we seem to have a magic money tree stroke forest when we had the COVID crisis, didn't we? There was money from all over, well, where it was coming from, but money was mm -hmm. given. Well, we borrowed it, didn't we? And now we're having to pay it back at a, at a higher rate. Yes. Well, so, you know, 45 billion pounds in tax cuts and 72 billion pounds in increased borrowing announced on Friday. People are saying, have the lunatics taken over the asylum? Or is it the shock and awe that has been promised? And as Eamon was saying, could it just be the thing? But could is, it save us? Isn't this the same, though, all over Europe and the world? I mean, everybody is doing well, this. Except, well, the UK government have taken quite a bold, different approach to pretty much any other government at this stage. And it's been widely and called to it's, it's the it's it's going to be interesting. Yes. yes. So yes. Now, now she's going to win. We get to the Telegraph, and you've chosen a story about immigration here. Uh, immigration must fall amidst the growth drive, trust is told. Well, immigration, I, I, I find the immigration thing very strange. I mean, you know, it, how they um, messed up the whole business uh, of Ukraine. Uh, when, you know, people were in terrible, terrible straits. And they, in order to come to this country, they had to fill in forms on computers, and they couldn't get through. There, there was no, you know, the, the, it was a terrible situation happening there. And then finding that, that they had to go to another country, like Uranda, uh, was very odd, I thought. I mean, I think the immigration isn't at all as it should be. I think it should be organized a little better well and then we've got these uh, labor shortages right throughout the i world. know and people can't deny these i mean you just in your everyday life you will see this in the, the hospitality industry whether you're checking into a hotel there's a lack of cleaners there's a lack of uh, waiters there's a lack of cooks there's a lack of just right around, I mean, just... just Fruit the, pickers, stuff rotting in the fields, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so many things. And somebody, somewhere, has got to say, let's organise this, and we've got to accept a certain amount of immigration to fill this And that's role. a cabinet row that, that Liz Truss is expecting to have. Exactly, period. that's yeah. the story, isn't it? But you can't, I mean, it can't be beyond the, the brains of the people supposedly running this country to sort something out that actually makes sense and that will work. But the trouble is, no one wants to work doing those things. I mean, it's hard and working in a kitchen. Unless you're fleeing from Ukraine or... Yes, the, the for a better life here. For a better life here. Yeah, exactly. That's but I mean, it is, it's not... All the things we've just been talking about, you're absolutely right. We're in a terrible situation with restaurants, with hotels, mm -hmm. but people don't want to work. People don't want to clean a room. Yeah. You know, it's as simple as... say you're right there, Biggins, and I mean, uh, looking at the summer, the summer passed, and, you know, when I think when I was a teenager, it was about getting jobs, yes. uh, working in hotels, mm. working in bars, working, you know, just doing anything that anybody else wouldn't do and getting cash. Yeah. And thinking, gosh, I can buy a pair of jeans this weekend or whatever. Yeah. What's happened to that generation? Well, everyone just ethic? wants to be famous and yeah. be on Instagram be or, or a reality TV. Or the parents yeah. pay for them. It, well, quite, there is that. But I remember that as well. Yeah. But, but, but back then, back in the old days, you used to be able to leave one job and walk into another without, without worrying about yeah. getting a job and no one... Cleaning did. cars, cutting grass, you know. I love remember? being a barmaid. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, yeah I bars were for me. Girl. I was a shops girl. Were you? I thought I would <laughs> be you? a barman. I oh. thought I would be a barman. I thought that was yes, my yes, job. Yes, yes, yes. a great pub. Do you know, I worked on TV for two years doing the tea time news and working in a pub at night. Yeah. Because I thought the TV thing wouldn't last. Yeah. I still think it wouldn't. There's <laughs> <laughs> still time, Eamon. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think you'd be, Isabel, if you weren't doing this? An interior designer. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I get okay. that. Well, well, I don't get it. You obviously haven't been to your house. I have <laughs> <laughs> No sign of that. You uh, need Trinity to yes. have the perfect home so, inside. Yeah, you need time, money, and taste. And your career is I don't have that is well and yeah. true. <laughs> well, you know. Um, when we come back, Biggins is going to talk about doggies. He's going to talk about corgis. <laughs> and, uh, wow, if you've got a corgi... And I'm, I'm a bit split in this because people people do breeding in a really ghastly way with poor dogs. But anyway, you, you could get six grand for a corgi. I know. We're going to talk about that next time round. Uh, your view's very welcome.